Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. Did ExxonMobil mislead its investors and the public by hiding the fact that burning fossil fuels significantly contributes to climate change? That's a question that 20 attorney generals say they will be looking into in the coming months. What triggered this investigation was a report by news outlet Inside Climate News. It exposed internal memos between ExxonMobil senior executives. They state that as early as 1978, the oil giant knew that the emission of carbon dioxide when you burn fossil fuels significantly contributes to climate change. Now joining us to discuss all of this is Dan Ziegart. He's a senior fellow at the Climate Investigation Center, and he's an investigative journalist. Thanks so much for joining us. Dan. Thank you, Jessica. Glad to be here. So, Dan, we have two more state attorney generals saying they are going to investigate Exxon, along with New York State attorney generals, um, who's all who said that they will investigate ExxonMobil. What's the significance of this expansion? Well, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's it's this is an extremely important uh, development for several reasons. One is that. For those who have followed the uh, tobacco uh, wars, uh, who did follow the tobacco wars back 20 years ago when the attorneys general took on the tobacco industry, this is a very familiar um, pattern that took place then. And of course, uh, it, it, that resulted in 50 attorney generals uh, suing the tobacco industry and eventually bringing them to the table for a, an almost $300 billion settlement and some uh, significant changes in the way they did business in the United States. So when we see other attorney generals uh, jumping on the bandwagon, so to speak, it's a clear indication that politically they view this as feasible. And secondly, uh, that they, they believe that there is a legal theory um, and that they can use their offices to prosecute that theory uh, under fraud statutes and uh, under other remedies that they have at hand to potentially bring companies like ExxonMobil and other fossil fuel giants uh, to the table uh, or get a, some kind of a judgment against them uh, to uh, make them do business in a different way. All right, I'm going to play the part of the uh, defense attorney here. Even if, let's say, these uh, senior executives knew about the potential dangers of, of burning fossil fuels and how they would affect climate change, couldn't they argue that the science was not indisputable at the time? What, what do you make of that argument? Well, I, it's, it's absolute nonsense. I mean, first of all, the fossil fuel companies have, particularly the oil companies, and particularly of all of those, ExxonMobil, which has an enormous research capability, the largest of all the fossil fuel companies. Uh, they've known for many, many years, going back probably to the 1950s, uh, that fossil fuels contributed to uh, what was then called the greenhouse effect. Uh, there are scientific papers going back into the 50s showing that their scientists were participating and aware of discussions with uh, mainstream scientists on this very topic. So we're going back a long, long way. Turn the clock back to the 70s, and you have already we have from ICN, the online news network, uh, we have uh, an acknowledgement by them that this is in fact true, that climate change is happening, that fossil fuels are in fact causing it. We also know from the way they did business, Shell, for instance, in the Arctic and others, uh, counting on and uh, uh, very much aware of the melting of the ice caps uh, so that they could profit from it by drilling, uh, raising their drilling rigs out in the open ocean according to very careful calculations of how much sea level rise was going to take place. So these are absolute beacons uh, showing that not only was uh, were the fossil fuel companies aware of climate change, they in fact were aware of it long before most Americans. All right, Dan, give us an update on New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman's investigation into ExxonMobil. Um, have they started to make much progress? This investigation started back in uh, October, I believe. Uh, yeah, actually, I think it started in uh, in early November, uh, and uh, apparently they received the first. Uh, what they're going to be uh, getting what they call rolling production, which is production of documents, in other words, material that the company is going to turn over to the AG, uh, to the Attorney General. Um, they've got the first batch of that as of December, uh, according to Schneiderman, thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of documents. So we don't know what's in that trove of documents. 
But we do know that uh, the actual production of evidence is underway. What we don't know, and there were very few details about it at Tuesday's press conference, in fact, no details, was what exactly they hope to accomplish. Where do they want to take this? Do they want to get a court to declare that they must change their way of business? Do we, are they going to try to get uh, certain damages based on the damage that's been caused by climate change? These are things we don't know. And that applies to the uh, two new states that you mentioned that have entered the fray, Massachusetts uh, and the, the Virgin Islands, sorry, not a state, but a U.S. territory that has an attorney general and was also involved uh, back in the day in the tobacco settlement. So there you have uh, right now very few specifics. But we do know that things are rolling and uh, it may encourage not only other states, it may encourage private parties uh, to enter the fray and to uh, file their own legal actions. Dan, I'm glad you kind of mentioned the the different tools that they have in their toolbox, these attorney generals. Um, what are the types of remedies that the states could pursue and lessons that they could learn from the whole tobacco industry debacle um, that took place? And, and, and what would you suggest in terms of um, if, if, if people are looking for some sort of justice here, what, what should be the consequences for oil giants like ExxonMobil? Okay. Well, taking the first part, the toolbox, um, the AGs, the United States attorney generals, uh, state attorney generals in this country have an un, almost a, an unrivaled uh, set of tools. And New York and California in particular, New York has something called the Martin Act that allows the attorney general to go after almost any information from almost any party re relating to fraud. So most and most of what the attorney generals will be looking at is whether ExxonMobil and perhaps others fraudulently misrepresented. In other words, they knew better, but they said it anyway, that climate change was either not occurring or that it wasn't caused by human uh, activity. Uh, so they'll be using fraud statutes. They'll be using uh, consumer protection statutes uh, that are common, all 50 states. Uh, and there may be some special theories that will be developed along the way. We don't know. But basically, the, the attorney generals are empowered to protect the public's health and welfare in virtually any way uh, that's uh, legally possible. So this is a very, very wide open uh, kind of uh, situation. Now, as far as what they would like to achieve, that's a good question. We didn't, we didn't get, we really didn't get an answer to that on Tuesday. But uh, it's possible that they could force the companies to do business in a different way, to perhaps stop developing uh, new sources of fossil energy, uh, to be more open uh, with investors. There's a, certainly a strong question of investor fraud here, of investors not being informed about what the potential dangers to the company's businesses were from uh, from uh, climate change as we find that we can't take any more of the stuff out of the ground oil and gas and coal and burn it so what value do these uh, quote unquote assets actually have in an environment where carbon is constrained their assets would uh, lose value rather rapidly, but investors are not really being told this. So there's all sorts of things from what they t tell investors all the way up to how they actually operate in the business world. And it could lead to jail time. Is that right, Dan? Well, if, uh, if, if the companies, for instance, in New York, the Martin Act allows for the act uh, that uh, is being used by Attorney General Schneiderman, it allows for parallel criminal and civil inquiries, and that's pretty common. So absolutely, uh, were there a question of criminal culpability, uh, it's not impossible that there could be uh, some sort of criminal penalty for even executives of these companies. All right. Dan Ziegart joining us. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Love being here. Thank you again. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.